Oh, Neon Noodles got a lot on your mind. It's not really a relevant transition. <laughs> Just thinking of old killer songs, apparently. Old? Is that old? It's the same album as Spaceman. Oh god, that is old now, isn't it? That's like over- that's like a decade. We're all gonna die tomorrow. We're ancient. AOA. Didn't mean to get to get, to get around to this game for a bit, and now I am! Yeah, welcome to Neon Noodles. Let's start by playing an existing program. So, from an outside perspective, I think this is gonna be one of those games... My first reflex was to think of, like, Satisfactory and Factorio, but I think it's more along the lines of, uh, Opus Magnum and Sci... Sci Space Chem. There we go. Where we build a little program factory. There we go. I think, yeah, there's even... You can see all these commands on the bottom of the screen. This is a recognizable game style, but you're making noodles, evidently. That appears to be an avocado. And that's an avocado, and that's a chopped avocado, I think. Yep, sliced avocado. Recipes show how to make the required food. Avocado on a cutting station makes sliced avocado. My goal is five sliced avocados. Wow. What a great recipe. You take an avocado, you cut it in two pieces. Done. Dinner served. Anyway, let's hit play. So he picks up the avocado, awkwardly walks too far to a place to then cut it. Okay. Oh yeah, this is very Opus Magnum-y. I gotta say, right off the bat, I really feel like it'd be nice if he picked up an actual avocado and he sliced it and then put it into a receptacle of some sort instead of just having an icon that he, he that transforms. But it look, looks like we're using some relatively indie resources here, I guess. Let's go over some basics, like recording a program. All right, let's see. Move a course to the robot. Boop. Open menu. Start. Recording program. Click highlighted position to move robot. Hello? Click avocado producer to buy avocado. I would like to buy an avocado, please. Then go to the avocado. You have to keep clicking and he'll eventually get to where your, your, your destination is. Sell avocado. Then go back to the starting position. Then play. Okay. It is interesting having a more intuitive uh, input system at first, in that you had to like manually program out on the bottom of the screen in Opus Magnum, and, and here I could just just say what to do on the, on the fly. Looks like I have to finish the loop or I'm in trouble. Sliced avocado and cut fish. What, why is one of them called cut, the other one's called sliced? I wonder what the distinction there is. Okay, so I just need to turn five in of each, so you record. Avocado. Cut. So first you slice it, then you pick it up, it looks like, then you go over here, and you turn it in. So you need to use the- you essentially need to use the surface twice, once to cut it and once to retrieve it. Okay. Generate the return to start instruction. <clears throat> Which I guess gives it the instructions needed to go back to where it started so that I can loop correctly. Play the record program. That one? Play? Oh. <clears throat> why, why did both robots do the same thing? To, was the other one already programmed? Introducing automatic and manual recipes. Play pre-recorded programs. Okay. There's something very melodic about this. It sounds like chords are being played when all the little movements happen in sync with each other. Anyway, this thing sucks. <laughs> they don't accomplish anything. Edit the program for the first robot. Click. Step forward to the program until after the first star. There. Insert a wait function. Like spacebar? Nope. Q. 
Oops. Now watch it be boiled successfully. Nope. So now it's successfully boiling the rice, but it's not picking it up. Is it because it did the wrong thing here? Or? Um... Click between the two consecutive star symbols in the second program. There aren't two consecutive star symbols here. Insert two more generic instructions by bumping to the cutting station. Okay. Okay, well now one of them's working at least. I'm not really entirely sure... I'm not sure if I understand this tutorial right now. Why am I just... Like, it's just telling me what to do, but not really telling me why I'm doing it. Oh, I see. Up here, the recipe... Yeah. It implies that you need extra actions in order to do the task. The problem here is that they let me do things wrong. See, let's delete one over here, add a wait here. They, they allowed me to put a wait in the wrong command. What? Okay, so the recipe for the boiling rice is to wait, but they let me put wait in the wrong command. And as far as I can tell, they won't let me put it in now. So the tutorial's broken, <laughs> which is unfortunate. Let's start over. All right. Pro tip to developers, uh, fix this. <laughs> the trouble, the, uh, the fucking, uh, yeah. They allow you to make mistakes in the tutorial and then you can't go back and fix them because the game's restricting all of your commands completely. So you can't do anything else except for what they want you to do, except for the fact that they fucked up and let you do other things that are wrong, which means you then end up uh, breaking the tutorial, and you don't realize what you did wrong because you're trying to play the tutorial because you don't know what you're doing. There we go. Now I know what to do, though. So now the left guy is waiting one turn, and the right one is spending three turns chopping. Because that's how it, that's how it takes. That's how it do. All right, peel shrimp. What? Okay, I'll save. Let's create our first setup from scratch. These are nice backgrounds. They don't have much to do with about the gameplay, but that's the cyberpunk aesthetic, as they wanted to have it have that thing. That's a really particular aspect of cyberpunk, because they really fixated on having cyberpunk be all about this cross section between like massive corporations and cyber hacking and dystopia and human rights violations and transhumanism and a lot of Asian aesthetic in Western locations. Like, that's just the particular fixation. Like, not just neon, but like Japanese neon, and so on. And I don't take any particular issue with the heavy use of Japanese. It's just the fact that it's a, it's a, what a what an incredibly specific manifestation for the genre to end up having is this really big fixation on exactly that. I guess it's just because Blade Runner did it or something, I don't know. Let's make a shrimp producer. There's a cutting station. Why do they want me to space these out so much? This is really inefficient, it feels like. So put the robot down here. Open the menu for the robot. Make him face left. Edit the program. And he will now chop several of these guys. Go here. D D One, two, three. And then... Return to start. And go and play. Oopsie. Let's try this again. Yeah, I need to pick him. I need him to pick it up afterwards. I only did enough for him to peel it, but then he leaves it on the ground. There we go. Maple beans. Sure, I'll save. I guess. Yeah, I don't know why it keeps opening a save menu. This recipe requires both ingredients to be placed on the boiling station. 
So grab those things, put them on the boil, okay. Put them both in the boiling station, wait for three turns. Okay. What are my ingredients? So... That one. That one. I'm gonna find out whether there's any reason why they keep making me walk around. Because it feels pointless. Let's find out. You. You have it. Cool. Boiling station. You. Have it. You. Boiling station. Wait, wait, wait. Grab. Turn around. Deposit. Return to start, I guess. That should work. Yep. There we go. Oh, but now it's starting to judge me. <laughs> so here's yeah. So I was right to say this takes this takes after Opus Magnum and whatnot a bit. We even have the uh, infograph things that tell you how everyone else is doing overall, how much area is taken. Yeah, here, so this is how much area the bot takes place, which is just one tile. Pretty much everyone was like frustrated by those tutorials and immediately was like, I'm gonna put them in one tile the moment they let, stop tutorializing me. And that's what they did. Then program size, whoa. I'm in this one tier and no, everyone else is here. I don't know what that program, what that means exactly though. And then there's cycles, which is how efficient you were. And some people were a little more efficient, but I had a very fast program apparently. Okay. Nigiri. Keep showing me all these saves, but as far as I can tell, when I click on a save, nothing happens, because it keeps saying they're all empty still. I don't know why level selection started opening up a save screen, exactly. We're gonna make some sushi. Okay. What are these recipes? Okay, so you have to pre prepare the fish and the rice separately, and then those prepared fish and rice can be made for the nigiri. Because you can see this hierarchy here. You boil the rice, and then you chop the fish, and then you, you mix the fish and the rice with a rolling station to make it a sushi. Okay. Isn't that rolling station for not that type of, of sushi, though? <laughs> the type of sushi where it's just a slab of fish on top of some rice? I think that's specifically the, the type that you don't do rolling in. I think they're just using this as a stand. Yeah, it is a rolling station. That's normally because you roll it in seaweed to have the stereotypical sushi appearance of those, like, you know, the ones that are in rolls, but... We're not making a roll, but I guess you still need a workstation, so I guess we're just calling it a generic workstation, but calling it sushi. Uh, let's see. So I can't have them just stand in place, right? Because you need... I need a rice and a cooking space, and I need fish and a chopping space, and I need a rolling station, and I need a deposit location. So that's, that's two items, that's two items, that's already the maximum, and then there's two more here, so there's, I need six total. So I'm gonna have to make do a bit. Okay. Hmm. How do I want to organize this space? the rice come from here the boiling station here so you can pick it up and put it in right there then I can have the fish here and the chopping station here then I can have the rolling station here so you deposit it right up here And then, when you're done, you can put it up here. So have you start off facing left, let's program you. So you pick up the rice, and then you turn to put it in the boiling. It only takes one turn to finish boiling, so I don't think it's worth trying to do anything else with that time. I'm, my overcooked brain is turning on, and I'm thinking like, oh, if I have to put stuff in the oven for a bit, I should probably prepare something else while it's in the oven. But in this case, it only takes one extra turn. So... 
While in real life, you might consider, oh, while the rice is boiling, I will chop my fish. But in this universe, you, it, the rice is done in one turn, so you might as well just stand here. So that's me putting it in, that's me waiting one turn, this is me picking it back up. I will now deposit it on the rolling station. Get my fish. Chop my fish, which is an instant action, gotcha. Rolling station. It looks like that takes one extra turn of action, so let's do one more rolling station here. Then we pick it up. And we deposit it. Then we return to start and go, and let's see if this works. No. Gotcha. Over here. I chopped the fish, but you, have to, you still have to do a second action to pick it up again. That keeps doing my head in a little bit. There we go. Now you just gotta go faster. Ta-da! Hey! I'm still the king of bot area. I got that's apparently my optimization focus. But my program size is also like fucking S tier apparently. I don't know why I'm in a tiny tiny divot of people when everyone else apparently needs way more than me. Uh, I'm unclear on what everyone else is doing with their space. I'm not used to winning this leaderboard the way I am. Like I am I am first place on bot area, first place on program size, and like second place on cycles, basically. I'm just below the most efficient cycle count. And I'm not sure how I'm get how I'm doing so well on all of them at once. We'll see though. Maybe the middle one's bugged because I've never seen it do anything besides me being amazing. So then we're gonna make quiche. Linking allows you to share programs between robots. When optimizing for program size, linking programs only count for half their size. Oh, am I getting multiple robots this time? I didn't think about that. I. I uh, I think I immediately had the access to the ability to having multiple robots. So in the last puzzle, I could have been more efficient in time by having one robot make the fish and one robot make the uh, the rice and then somebody mix them together, either a third robot or one of those robots or something. And that would technically, that would be faster than having one guy do everything. I wasn't thinking about it, my robot budget. But that pumps up that that would that would reduce your cycle count while increasing your rectangular bot area. So it depends on what you're trying to optimize here, space or speed or whatnot. They're saying that if you link programs, you it only counts for half size. I think they're implying basically that uh They're basically implying like if you have two machines performing the same action in parallel. It'll go faster. I guess that's another thing you could do is you could, uh, in order to make it turn in faster, like I could, there's so much space left over, so if you're super not optimizing for bot area, I could probably have a number of, like, I, I, there's probably enough space in that last level for me to make the same program five times on the same level with five robots, and they would all make one thing, and in that time, it would be over in only one loop instead of five, therefore I'd, it'd be way faster. So I'd, I'd win at cycles. That might be how some people did it. Okay, so I need uh, flour, I think. We're making dough. At a rolling station? Yeah. It's just flour and water, and then you roll for three turns, and then that's dough. Somebody else slices up a mushroom. Then the sliced mushroom gets mixed in with the egg and the milk, and the dough, and then put in the oven, and that becomes, what are we making here? We're making, oh yeah, we're making a quiche. Is a quiche that heavy on dough? I thought a quiche was mostly just a weird egg thing. I'm surprised there's so much like other ingredient, like dough and whatnot. I don't know, I've never made a quiche. I guess a quiche is sometimes kind of like a pie-like thing, which then it would have to have a thing. But a crust is not made of dough, is it? It's made of something else. Ah! I'm talking, I'm talking out my ass, so I'm just gonna move on. Okay, so this is a long sequence. The person who deals with the 
the uh, ingredients being turned in is uh, they're gonna be busy let's see a lot of actions so I'm gonna have to I think I'm gonna have a top robot doing ingredients and a bottom robot doing the cooking of each one and I somewhat have to question whether it's worth having this guy be the one that could that should I have a third person that just chops mushrooms Maybe. Hmm. So this guy needs the yeah. This guy needs at least at least four locations. So let's start with you. Uh, let's put the flower here. And the water here, and the rolling station here, and a deposit, a table, I guess, yeah, a deposit location. Have you start facing left, start recording you, so grab the water, put it down, grab the flower, Rolling station one, two, three is use, then you pick it up and you... Oopsie. Uh, backspace... Yeah. Turn down here. Deposit it. Reset to start. That's his program. Oopsie. Uh, there we go. Do the I'm done button. <laughs> Put a second robot right here. He's gonna pick up a mushroom, and then he's gonna chop said mushroom, and then he's gonna deposit said mushroom. <sighs> Should I organize this differently? I don't know. We're, we're doing a video. <laughs> Maybe I, just getting it done is more ideal than sitting here forever. Agonizing over de every detail, so let's, uh, oopsie. You record, pick up mushroom, chop mushroom, which takes one action, so then I pick it up, then I put it on the table. And then I return to my pre original point, and that's the end of your program. <clears throat> then this poor boy, he needs to pick up... <clears throat> so this is interesting. So the he has to wait for these ingredients to arrive first, but while he's doing that, there's other stuff he can do. Cause he so he gets the dough and he gets the mushroom, but he also gets an egg and he also gets milk, I think. Yeah. Let's get him started. Uh, let's put a robot down here. I'll put the oven at the bottom. Uh, I need to leave space for a turn in, so I guess I'll put it here. Put the oven up here. Put the turn in here. His egg and his milk. <coughs> Let's delete you. Have the robot start here. He'll start off facing right. Then record. He will pick up the milk. Put it in the oven. As far as I can tell, you just dump each ingredient into this thing one by one, which is... a concept. <laughs> Maybe not the most recommended way of cooking things. By now, the mushroom has been deposited. So he will now pick up the mushroom. Deposit the mushroom. Pick up this thing. And deposit that. Then wait. It takes three turns. Then pick it up. 
Oopsie. And then he will deposit it. Now what I'm curious is how... This is my first time using multiple robots, I think, so... How will this run in parallel? Also, will this even work at all, I guess? They just keep looping. Bot, colli bot collision, he fucking ran through the oven somehow. What even causes that? That's funny. Alright. Those are two of these. I'm not really sure how long it takes for him to get back into position. All I know is this guy's got shit to do for a while. <clears throat> it's kind of ideal if... Bot collision. What is going wrong? Oh. You. Don't have a return action. Okay, so when you do when you say insert return, it automatically sets up how to do that. At that point, I can just assume what it'll take. <clears throat> so the, the bot collisions because I didn't tell the first robot to go back to start. Wait, these guys spend a lot of time waiting. Um... <sighs> Something's going very wrong here. Alright, let's see if I can... Let's see if I can spot this. Do you make dough? Okay, you make dough. That's a quiche, so the first quiche goes in. What is going wrong? I think it's the mushroom guy. So he chops a mushroom, puts it down, waits. Um, mushroom guy, are you okay? I think his- something went wrong with his return to starting point command, apparently. Okay. So he just wasn't going all the way back. I think all the rotations and pickup actions are relative to their starting position. And mushroom guy just lost his mind. I probably did it somehow. There we go. There we go. Quiche mastered, evidently. There we go. All right, guys. Up, oh, see, I'm behind the curve on bot area now because I, I went all crazy and added three bots, did a bunch of stuff. But I am up. Wow, cycles. That was a fast one, apparently. If I look at this, I can see there being a version of this where I have um, a fourth bot. <laughs> Just go full crazy with it. Like, this guy, the, like, I set it up so these two guys put their item ingredients on a table that one bot can then load onto the oven, and then a fourth bot would be loading these two things into the oven, and then this string of actions wouldn't be so long because half of them would be done by a different bot, and then that would make the whole thing go significantly faster. I think that's a pretty reasonable conclusion to draw. But anyway, guys, this has been Neon Noodles. Thanks to the developer for sending me a code so I can preview their game. If you'd like to check this game out for yourself, there's a link to the Steam page in the description. Thanks for watching like always, guys, and I'll see you next time.